Welcome back to Human Humane Architecture on another beautiful early evening on a Tuesday here in downtown Honolulu uh, on 4th Street Mall, which is the financial district where today the trades are up. Mm -hmm. And for the ones in the audience who are not from here, they might think that has to do something with stock market, but it actually has to do with climate. Mm -hmm. And the perfect guest to talk about that is uh, Mr. Breezy Easy, Howard Wig. Welcome, Howard, to the show. Thank you, thank you. And, Beautiful uh, to be here. And many uh, know Howard when he's sitting here. And if you don't know Howard in that capacity, please go to Think Tech Hawaii and look up Code Green, which is your show. And it's mm -hmm. one of the longest standing shows here mm -hmm. for a good reason, mm -hmm. because it's awesome. And so we want to talk a little bit about sort of the, 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 sort of the, the, the boundary between our disciplines, I would mm -hmm. say. And uh, I'm really excited about it. And you will start off to talk about uh, some statistics and graphs that you got excited about. Well. And then Zuri is going to actually show something in the background that is uh, something I created together with my family business, mm -hmm. with my father Günther and my sister Cynthia back in Germany mm -hmm. that I was mm -hmm. bouncing off you while I was back in Germany. Mm -hmm. And we we're kind of starting to be getting a little bit of philosophical about uh, the aspect of uh, bioclimatic design mm -hmm. and its sort of global and intercultural international potential. But uh, why don't we start off to jump right in because we have to face a sort of yep. relatively new 30-minute pretty tight yeah, uh, slot. Yeah. But uh, I, in the announcement of the show, everyone knows you as bringing in these exciting guests, you know, that, mm -hmm. that you make talk about actually economy and ecology, I would say, and how they could both sort of support um, each other. Mm -hmm. But uh, you're just such a humble person that you hardly ever, you know, talk about yourself. So we want to do this a little bit as well here. And I want to share with the audience sort of maybe, there are many memorable moments, uh, <laughs> too many to tell here. But one most memorable is that you're always over there in a governmental building in amongst the people, the policy makers, mm -hmm. especially the, the building code uh, council. Mm -hmm members and uh, we have adopted something here a while ago that's the IBC the International Building Code and you believe that that is not sufficient enough here for the island so you're working really really hard uh, to uh, mm -hmm. make an amendment <coughs> I would say to that or make amendments to that and one of these sort of key moments for me was that some of the decision makers basically said, well, you know, just so maybe you guys are a little bit more quiet or you guys are a little mm -hmm. bit more quiet, I might change the code that egress emergency staircases don't have to be enclosed anymore. Because in New York City, they might want to be, if there's a fire in the building, you want to get out of the building, and you slip on an overized metal grating and break your mm -hmm. neck, it's not a good idea. And that's why the IBC says, let's enclose it. And you said, we don't have that problem here. We don't yeah. have eyes. And why don't we open up staircases? They become easy breezy. Mm -hmm. And that's why I call you Mr. Breezy Easy. Mm -hmm. So thank you again for being here. And maybe Zuri, you can uh, make, give the first uh, graph, the first chart, and yeah. you explain us what these are. And with that, who you are when you're not sitting here. So who is the other Howard? Who's the other Howard? Somebody who's been with the State Energy Office for longer than most viewers have been on the planet. I started, I won't even say the year, that's too, too shocking, but I started when the State Energy Office, offices nationwide started, and I've been there ever since. How did I last so long? Because it's fun. We really, really get things done. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. So, and you're also, you know, you're here, you're local. You've been mm -hmm. here for the majority of your life, mm -hmm. but you don't always stay here. You travel actually quite a bit, right? For yeah, just, educational just made the, uh, the United Airlines Million Mile Club. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's also pleasure, but not mm -hmm. primarily leisure. So what, yeah. what are the reasons why you're traveling so much? I go to the national code hearings. We have, you know, just in general, when you're building a building, you have the plumbing code, electrical code, and you have the energy code. And that ensures that the buildings or homes will be built in the most energy efficient manner. 
And these codes are updated every three years, and I participate at the national level in the IECC, the International Energy Conservation Code, and we have all of these propositions. We're going to change the code A, B, C, D, E, mm -hmm. and it goes on like over 500 different propositions. And we meet in a mainland city, and we sit there from eight in the morning, sometimes till 10, 11 at night, mm -hmm. debating, debating, debating. Mm -hmm. And there's all these industry people there, the insulation guys, the window guys, the lighting guys, the piping guys, and they want the code to kind of, kind of benefit them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then there's us government types who are just pushing for maximum energy efficiency in a cost-effective manner. Mm -hmm. So it's a really interesting dynamic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But over the years, I've become friends with the people who used to be the bad guys in our view, the NAHB, National Home Builders Association, and I've come to think like them. Any proposition that I look at, I'm asking, is this cost-effective? Will it add anything to the cost of building? And if so, is that minuscule cost totally worth it in the form of savings? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a lot of the traveling that I do is participating in mm -hmm, those things. Mm -hmm. It's yes. very exciting. Two, three, four hundred people in the auditorium. And, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. So we're here in Hawaii, beautiful Hawaii, where when I came here, I did some research too, I bet I did, and I, mm -hmm. I got really excited about, you know, learning, which I sort of knew, but then really not really consciously reflected on, but I heard this is the place that has the most, you know, resources as far as renewable energies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got the breeze we already talked about, we got the sun, mm -hmm. we got the ocean, mm -hmm. we got many others, and yeah. so, um, so here we are, but then you go back on the mainland, and you just told me before the show that the most innovative or cutting edge, you know, states in that one of them is Massachusetts, which is kind of mm -hmm. interesting, right? You yeah. wouldn't necessarily associate Massachusetts with that. Maybe not quite so surprising as California is the West Coast in general, mm -hmm. and also the Pacific Northwest, right, mm -hmm. in particular. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the first couple of charts are about that, and especially the fifth one, the slide number yeah, five, is yeah, the one yeah. you're most excited about. Maybe we want to bring that up. So yeah, thank you, yeah. Zuri. if we could just go. How about, uh, Zuri, we, we start with slide one, and I'll go through quickly to that and then mm -hmm. get, get to this one. So this slide graph is produced by Hawaiian Electric when Nexera looked like it was a real possibility. And on the left is the current year, and on the right, is 2045 when we're supposed to hit zero or 100% clean energy. And that big green or blue splotch in the middle was natural gas. Well, that was before next energy or when it was still in the game. Now that's off. And so Hawaiian Electric is gonna have to drastically revise this chart. So, I'm gonna, I've revised it myself according to efficiency. If we go to the next slide, this is the energy code impact and appliance efficiency impact as I see it. We're gonna go down, down, down in energy use and as soon as 2024, we could reduce our energy use just by efficiencies that far. And then we go to the next slide and 2030, even more. And finally, we go to the final slide. We have come very close to attaining 100% clean energy just by efficiency measures. Now, why do I make that outrageous statement? And by efficiency, I mean just reducing energy use in buildings, schools, hospitals, and homes. And I can't go into the details right now, but in my humble view, it can be done. And then to reinforce that, finally, we go to the next slide. This is from the Pacific Northwest. They're doing a similar type of slide, except that the efficiency measures go up. That big green splotch there, starting with uh, 2015, going to 2035, achieving the all the savings towards 100% clean energy, that green is all energy efficiency. And then looked at all the bar graphs on the right, 
this is Hawaii specific and that little purple thing on the far right that is the cost of a kilowatt hour with efficiency 2.2 cents all the other renewables all the oils and everything are much 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 higher so they are taking my dream and taking it a Aloha, step I'm Richard. so if there was ever a true believer in energy efficiency it's me and that's my mission mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thank you very much and I'm going to explain what the audience sees in the back, so which Zuri always so perfectly <laughs> arranges is that it looks like we are sitting in there, but mm -hmm. actually we're not. We're sitting in the studio. But this is the project that I did with my with my Ohana practice, and it's a school, and that's actually how we got uh, to know each other. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. we got to know each other briefly before, but then I was reading in the papers here many years ago. I think about three years ago that they're thinking about air conditioning schools here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was outraged because I had started to work in that field in Germany, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. has the highest energy efficiency standards in the world, or one of the highest. And the, the building uh, sort of uh, rating system is called Passive House. And mm -hmm. Passive House mm -hmm. says 15 kilowatt hours per square meter per year, period. Mm -hmm. And that, that would translate into about 1.5 kilowatt hours per square foot. Which gets very close year. to your number which here. Which is like zero. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that we're talking in a, in a cold temperate climate where it also gets hot over the summer. We're mm -hmm. hitting 40 degrees at times. It doesn't last long. For, but 40 translating into almost over 90 Exactly, degrees, yeah. exactly. Thank you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, there's still the, the European metric <laughs> guy <laughs> in Celsius versus Fahrenheit. You caught me on that one. So that's what the audience will, will see. And we're not going to talk about individual pictures. I'm not going to explain the project. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm going to explain that, that here on the island, we have the phenomenon to have a temperature that's the closest to thermal comfort that we can get anywhere mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. there, there are other tropics. So you know, there's 40% of the tropics, which we're part of, and 60% the majority in the world are temperate climates where it's way more complicated to, to get off the grid or to reach mm -hmm. that goal. And so the mainland people have it a lot harder than we have it here to because, begin with. Because they have both summer and winter. Exactly. You have to cope with both of them, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So here, um, you know, when I, when I came, they put me up in a hotel, actually the Alamoana Hotel, and I came and it was all closed. Mm -hmm. And there was this thermostat and it was set to, no, I'm doing Fahrenheit, 73, which very is close good, to Very good, very good, yep. And I was thinking, this is, feels like what it had outside with a natural air conditioning. Mm -hmm. And I turned it off, and I'm sliding the doors open, which I was lucky that hotel still the, the, allows the it. Door, yeah, yeah. And, and it basically was that. And that sold me to come here and saying mm -hmm, that's for mm -hmm. my personal comfort, mm -hmm. but it's also for my professional comfort that I mm -hmm. want this place to be to be really sort of the leader, thinking, you know, in the United States, if there's one beacon that shows it, Mm -hmm. faster. It's almost a little like cheating because it's easier here, right, than on the mainland. On the mainland yep. you need yep. triple pane glass, mm -hmm. you know, you need a foot of insulation or more that we get to insulation, which you might say we need insulation here too, but we might not actually, might not yeah. need that much. It's, it's a di different type too. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And let me throw in that when you're bringing that natural air in at the Ella Moana Hotel, mm -hmm. It is much better air generally than you're getting from air conditioning. There's this concept called IAQ, indoor air quality. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, indoor air quality, especially in Hawaii, where have the cleanest air in the world, mm -hmm. is not as good as the outdoor air. You, you get all these interior pollutants. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're improving your health in addition to mm -hmm. minimizing energy use. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. I think this is a good point to take our little one minute break. We and, and barely warmed up. That's the nature of it, as you know. Yeah. You know, you see how it feels <laughs> from the other side, right? Yeah. Probably even worse. <laughs> so uh, take that little break and then be back with Howard Wig, Mr. Breezy Easy. Aloha, I'm Richard Emery. I'm with co-host Jane Sugimura of Condo Insider, Hawaii's weekly show about association living. 
The uh, purpose of these videos is to educate board members and condo residents about issues uh, relating uh, to association living. Uh, we hope they're helpful and uh, that they uh, assist in resolving uh, problems that uh, affect the relationship uh, between boards and their residents. Each week, Thursday at 3 p.m., we bring you exciting guests, industry experts, who for free will share their advice about how to make your association a better place to live and answer a lot of very interesting questions. Aloha, we hope you'll tune in. Welcome back to Humane uh, Human Architecture. Today with Howard Wig, Mr. Breezy Easy. Mm -hmm. And we just stopped before the break. Uh, where you actually, what I probably like amongst the many things the most about you, there, you're, you're a holistic thinker. Mm -hmm. You're not just thinking about the signs, you're thinking about the arts as well. And the arts mm -hmm. include the human aspect. So you were mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. the thermal comfort, not just in a way how much do I have to make it so I don't I don't sweat? But you also mm -hmm. pointed out I need to I need to inhale. Mm -hmm. I need oxygen, right? So this is an important part. This is actually a tricky part uh, on in the temperate climates because the passive house um, I think has to take the position to say once a person opens the window, I waste energy out of the window because they do it at the wrong time in the winter when it's cold. You open your window, you get fresh air, but you waste uh, your, your heat. Mm -hmm. That's why a machine is doing that or has to do that. And that's a big controversy. And actually Europeans used to basically heat with, uh, with water. Mm. Uh, with radiant heat, water radiant heat, mm -hmm. and because of that system, they actually switched to the American system of forest air or moved mm -hmm. air, mm -hmm. and it's not AC, I call it AD, it's air, it's air distribution. So you have an, uh, an air handling unit that flushes the, the air in the building, through the building with a very low velocity, and then you have a heat exchanger that you run the heat over or the cold mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in, in, in the summertime and it basically re-injects it back to the fresh incoming air. But there is, an, there is an increasing sort of opposition from the general public that says we don't want hermetic homes. You know, we mm -hmm. don't want a machine mm -hmm. to control our life. Mm -hmm. And once again, here in Hawaii, uh, we, don't, we don't have that necessity. That's why it's paradise or could be paradise. Mm -hmm. Which, which it isn't yet, but that's your, that's your mission, both in, in your daily job mm -hmm. and also uh, very often on, on your show, that you're fighting for reconnecting to the natural systems, mm -hmm. but also embracing modern technology. So you're not saying we're going back to the, to the beach and, and mm -hmm. to the grass shack, mm -hmm. because that's an illusion. We can't do that. So we need to embrace modern, modern technology. So maybe talk a little bit about these means and methods and technologies that we can apply in buildings today. Sure. Well, for, first and foremost, uh, my basic design I call rushing headlong into the 1950s mm -hmm. because that, that's when I was a kid here and air conditioning in homes was absolutely unheard of and we had big windows and we opened up doors so the air would flow through the entire house mm -hmm. and long overhangs and we had lanai's and that's where we hung out mm -hmm. we didn't enclose the house at all everything was open 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 mm -hmm. and then because of the wonders of modern technology now virtually all new home not all most new home construction is centrally air conditioned and what I do with the energy code is encourage, encouraging us to go back to the passive design, mm -hmm. but with new technology. The homes that I grew up in and my friends grew up in were single wall, which was okay, except that the heat came pouring through when the radiant sun was pouring mm -hmm. against it. And the windows, if we close them, almost all the sun's heat came through there and did over the roof, the sun's heat would come pouring through. Now we have reflective technology and I built that into the energy code. Reflective roofs and they don't have to be white, they can be other colors, 
where they reflect back the huge majority of the radiant heat striking that roof so that you're naturally cool. Ditto with the walls, we're the only state in the Union with cool walls. And the windows, you can have almost perfect visibility through the windows, but they're what's called high performance windows, and you reject easily 70% of the heat that wants to come through there. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the type of uh, thing we do. And then overhangs, overhangs, overhangs. If possible, I would like to see one whole wall of a residence be one great big lanai, just with a concrete slab, electrical outlets, and you just have all your parties, your evenings, everything. You just hang out on that great big lanai. Mm -hmm. And the kids can go running around on the grass. The dogs can go running around too. Mm -hmm. It's just great Hawaiian living. Mm -hmm. that, that's the way I have constructed the uh, Tropical Energy Code for, for residences. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that. It, mm -hmm. it helps us, us practitioners, the students, because if the law isn't with us, the code isn't with us, mm -hmm. it just stays mm -hmm. a dream. Yeah. But if, you know, the, 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 the rules and the, the regulations are basically going to be with us, are going to be on our side. So, mm -hmm. so you look at, at nature, a very nice shirt on as always, you know, mm -hmm. and it obviously shows us nature as an example. But you're not looking at it as we see it in many ways where there's invasive systems introduced that works mm -hmm. with artificial mm -hmm. systems. And then there's sort of a, a local ornament lick and sticked on, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not looking at it in a sort of facial yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're looking at it in a substantial way, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And it kind of reminds me of almost reconnecting to, to the ancestors who knew how to do it. And it always mm -hmm. puzzled me actually for quite some time that there were different kind of hollies, so the other uh, indigenous ways of living. There were some that were all open uh, on, the, on the ground floor and mm -hmm. easy breezy, but there are some who were all enclosed. Yeah. And it puzzled me for a while until I started to understand how that must have been feeling in there as far as thermal comfort. And straw as an insulator has an R value. Mm -hmm. So it's actually insulating. So this mm -hmm. is sort of the mm -hmm. original source, right? The ancestral yeah. source yeah. for what you're mm -hmm. trying to mm -hmm. propagate right now. And also because straws are hollow, and if you pack mm -hmm. them, there is yeah. voids in between. So they have always been breezy as well, right? And in, in this case, we don't have straw, but we have a lot of other materials mm -hmm. with, with that same air mm -hmm. content to, mm -hmm. to serve as mm -hmm. insulators. And I didn't mention we do have one mechanical system in these tropical homes, namely ceiling fans. Mm -hmm. Ceiling fan technology, just like all other technologies, has improved vastly. For less electricity, you can get more circulated air mm -hmm, down there. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have controls, slow, medium, high. Mm -hmm. We have a hot Kona weather day, boom, you just turn the ceiling mm -hmm. fan on high and mm -hmm. you're comfortable as anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And although we're not at all supposed to make advertisements for any kind of brand, but there is one brand recently that has mm -hmm. sort of innovated the yeah. tradition of, you want to say their name, otherwise I do it. So yeah, I'm, a, I'm, 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 a, I'm a host also. So it's I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there are fans, if guys mm -hmm. go to Costco, they see them, the big ones. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. look like big ass fans, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the convention center, actually, the lobby, which yeah. is hermetic, yeah. Yeah. was converted to actually work mainly mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. with with fans, yeah. so that works. And the, the other companies will say, hey, that's an improved blade technology, we'll, we'll do mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe running through some of the sort of 101 in bioclimatic design and using, you know, what the audience saw when Zuri is sort of seeding in the images. This building, basically, the orientation, let's start with orientation. Orientation mm -hmm. is really key, right? Absolutely. Why is that, Howard? Because generally our trade winds come from the northeast, you want the broad, stick to homes because they're simpler. You want the broad, long side of the homes facing the northeast so the wind comes right there. You allow it in. You have exhaust through the southwest part of the home so that it just makes its way through there. Mm -hmm. Plus, the sun rises in the east, sets in the west. You want to minimize those exposures so you don't get that direct radiant mm -hmm. heat, especially the afternoon. Mm -hmm heat from there. So you're sheltering by orienting like that, you're sheltering yourself mm -hmm. from the western mm -hmm. sun. Mm -hmm. 
And that, I think this picture is perfect because actually this is mm -hmm. facing east, this is facing the campus. And people might say, well, I don't want to have a closed wall towards the east because there mm -hmm. might be a nice view. And this is a solution here where we made these concrete slabs. Mm -hmm. And these concrete slabs are geometric in the way that the sun, when it gets past 10, 11 a.m., which is where the sun gets problematic, mm -hmm. these fins basically shade the indoor space. Mm -hmm. So we call this architecture an exoskeleton. So you use the structure as a shading vise for the for the building. Mm -hmm. So these are elements, you know, there's there's a lot of repertoire, you know, within these sort of rules and regulation that we say you better follow because these are the bioclimatic, you know, uh, rules you you have to follow, but within these there's a lot of wiggle room. There's a lot of interpretation. Oh, sure, yeah. There's a lot of diversity. Yeah. So not every home you're talking about that is ideal has mm -hmm. to look the same. Yeah. Right? Oh, heavens yes, yeah. So, so that's, a, that's a big advantage. Mm -hmm. So um, we're getting close to the end of the show. Again, I just mm -hmm. my, you made me aware of that actually the building, you know, I was revisiting, we call this post-occupancy evaluation or evidence-based mm -hmm. ba mm -hmm. design assessing. You made me aware that the things we've been doing there, because the climate in Germany, besides it being tempered, it's very similar to here as far as the sun you know, <laughs> angles and the sun yeah. orientation. So you could just replace the fixed glazing here with, with jealousies and you would, mm -hmm. you would have. So there's something universal about bioclimatic design and there's obviously things that are very specific to, to our very special place here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And again, um, it was a pleasure to have you here, Howard. Um, you, you, you're not calling this an end. Come on, we're just getting I, warmed I, up I here. have to, but uh. I will just redirect the audience <laughs> to your show. See this as promotion because I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of your show. I watch it all the time and I'm, I'm a big fan of you personally. We've had the chance to become good friends. And you're very encouraging for my personal work as a bioclimatic architect and mm -hmm. for the students. You've been coming in many times as a, as a juror, as a reviewer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just want to thank you for doing this for us and for the island, mm -hmm. because this is going the right direction. This way, through you, uh, the island has a chance to stay paradise. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Howard. Well, I'll close with a famous quote from somebody much smarter than me. Work is much funner than fun. And that, that's what I have with this type of work. Awesome, awesome closing <laughs> words. So thank you very much.